Welcome to our weekly maritime video blog. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. This week, we are continuing the discussion on blockchain and the maritime industry. So if you joined us on our episode last week, we talked on kind of an overview of blockchain and briefly talked a little bit about the technology. Um, on this episode today, we're gonna talk specifically about the maritime industry and from our company's standpoint where we see some of the potential uses. Now, that doesn't mean that those are the only uses within the maritime industry as more and more people understand this technology and start to potentially adopt the technology. I think the potential in the maritime industry for using blockchain could be endless. But again, as a company, as we look at this technology and how to deploy it, whether it's part of our arms platform or part of our other customer operations, we don't wanna use technology just for the sake of technology. We wanna make sure that as we deploy technology and solutions into the maritime industry, that these solutions are ultimately gonna help our customers. They're gonna improve efficiency. They're gonna reduce workloads, reduce operating costs, and really help our customers do what they do better. So we're not about just deploying technology because blockchain is in the news and in the headlines. We really wanna take a serious look at at how to deploy this technology. There are a few companies um, that I would call fringe companies. I'm not going to link them or mention them specifically here that have popped up in different parts of the world that say they're blockchain experts in the maritime industry. I would be very wary and very careful of any company that's popped up within the last year to say they're a blockchain expert. There are very few companies that have the expertise of blockchain to be able to realistically and effectively deploy this into the uh, in to the maritime industry. So just as a little bit of review here on Uncle Corey's story time, we're gonna talk just a little bit about blockchain. So as we talked last time, blockchain is the immutable ledger that tracks the transactions within the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. So there's information that's put into a block that all the parties can see and each block depends on the previous block. So realistically, it's a distributed ledger that everybody can see the transactions that take place. So it's really very, very difficult, if not impossible to go back and change. If there's a mistake, we realistically have to build a new block on top of the block that's already there. And each block, like I said, depends on the previous block. So we talked a little bit about that last time. If you're interested to get a little bit more in depth, we'll put a link for that video down below so you can kind of go back to that video first to see our review and then come back and watch this one as we kind of talk about the maritime industry. So in the maritime industry, there's a joint venture that's been formed between IBM and the Danish shipping company Maersk. 51% owned by Maersk, 49% owned by IBM. And the purpose of this company is to look at realistically um, and the viability of bringing blockchain technology into the maritime industry. As we talked last time, back in 2016, Maersk and IBM did a really interesting experience, experiment where they tracked a container from Kenya to Rotterdam um, and use blockchain technology to do that. And this was really kind of to prove the theory that a lot of people were thinking about of how we can use it in the maritime industry. So in this video, we wanna talk just a little bit more on some of the uses that we would see across the, this industry in the cargo lines, in the cruise lines, in the large yachts. And just because we don't mention something here again, doesn't mean that that's not a potential use for blockchain. So in the cargo industry, as you think about the movement of a cargo container or the movement of a ship or the movement of some type of good or um, or commodity, there are a lot of people that are involved from the point of departure all the way across to the point of arrival. So with that, there's a lot of transactions that take place when it comes to the cost for moving the container from the departure point to a port, from the port to the ship, the ship to the shore, shore back to a truck or a train, to a truck, to final distribution. So there's a number of moving pieces that make that container movement possible. And each person or organization involved in that movement has a different system of how they track that. So 
if you look at, hey, I'm moving one container, it's very easy for me to be able to, to track that movement. But most of these companies don't move one container, they move thousands of containers. So with that, the ledger system to be able to track it, I keep a ledger, then the people I'm working with keep a ledger, someone else has a ledger. So the issue is, is there's multiple ledgers or journals that record all these different transactions. What blockchain does is it brings all of those ledgers or journals together in one distributed kind of ledger. So if I'm involved in the movement of a container, I can see all the transactions that are taking place or all the different blocks that are building on the previous block through that transaction. So what it helps to do is number one with transparency that you see what's happening through the whole movement of this container, but it also helps really to stay out in front of any potential disputes about the movement of containers or pricing um, or other things. So it's, it's really cool to see how this technology is gonna work to help really improve the movement and the efficiency of moving cargo. So that's just one example. You could also use blockchain when it comes to um, tracking or the, the logistics for the ship itself. When a ship pulls into port, besides moving cargo on and off the ship, there's logistics that take place for the ship. The ship will take on fuel or fuel oil. There may be spare parts it needs to take on, repairs that need to happen, crew changeouts that need to take place, other logistic items like food and water that need to be unloaded. So even within those transactions, there's a number of companies that are working to make those happen. So you could realistically even build a blockchain for crew movements, a blockchain for logistics. So as you start to think about our operations in the maritime industry, and again, speaking specifically of cargo, there's a number of different places where the blockchain technology could really help approve the efficiency um, of that particular operation. Now, it doesn't mean that all of this is gonna happen all at once. This is gonna take some time over the next few years um, for research and development to happen, to take place for us to really get a better understanding of, of how to use this technology in the maritime side. On the cruise ship side of it, really the same thing is there's a number of places where you could use the blockchain technology um, to help improve cruise ship operations. Even when it gets in to passengers buying a ticket. So there's a transaction that takes place sometimes through two or three parties. If the passenger goes through a travel agent, the travel agent goes through a supplier and then to the cruise line or the cruise line uses a travel agency. So there's a number of different points where that could be pulled into the block um, and a blockchain built just for passenger tickets. There could be another block that would be built specifically for crew logistics. So crew members have to take certain training classes and certifications. So to be able to track that, there's multiple points that are involved from the cruise lines to the training centers, to the organizations that, that work to recruit crew members and the crew members themselves. So we could build a block to track just the training side of it. We could build blocks also on the cruise lines to track logistics. Cruise lines take on a ton of food, a ton of supplies, and a ton of fuel, and there's multiple vendors and parties that are a part of that. So a block could be built specifically for the different logistics. And you could even have a block built for fuel, one for hamburger buns, one for steak. So you can look at, there can be a number of things that can be built. Now they may not all be good or efficient for the cruise line, but there's a number of places that you start to think through a cruise line operation of how you could potentially use blockchain there. Also in the large yachts, the large yachts, some of them are charter and take on passengers. Um, they also have logistic requirements. So in the same sense as, as cargo lines or cruise lines, within a large yacht operation, management companies are typically responsible for large yachts and their operation, or the large yachts have an agent who help them with logistics. So again, there's a number of people who could potentially touch that large yacht through a transactional state, that blockchain could really help to improve those transactions and improve the efficiency of it so everybody can see exactly what's happening. So those are just some of the uses and it's really exciting to think about the technology and how it's gonna be deployed. We um, are putting time, energy, and effort in blockchain technology here at IMSA to see how we can use it as part of our ARMS platform 
but also working with our customers to continue to develop other solutions that will help them. So there's a couple of organizations that have kind of come to the forefront um, over the last few months, specifically for blockchain. One is Hyperledger, um, and that's an organization under the Linux Foundation. And Hyperledger, as we talked in the last video, is really the platform or the framework that is, is hosting the development of blockchain um, in the different blockchain programs. So we'll put, again, a link to Hyperledger down below. There's another organization that, that has also uh, come up in the last year or so called BIDA, and it's Blockchain in Transportation. And it's, it's really, really kind of a cool organization that's looking at across all transportation boundaries. So not just um, rail or trucking or aviation or maritime, but really this, the association is bringing together transportation as a whole to look at how can we, as a transportation industry, develop standards for blockchain and the use of blockchain. Because a lot of times, again, in the movement of cargo, it doesn't just it's not just on a ship. It'll go from a truck or a train to a ship, sometimes from a ship to a port to a truck to an airplane. So within the transportation scheme, there's a lot of movement within that. So standards have to be developed. And that's really the focus of BIDA is to bring the transportation industry together to help um, put kind of some of those standards together. It's a really uh, interesting organization. We'll put a link to them uh, below as well. So the last thing we want to talk about, as with blockchain, there's other technologies that you could consider as kind of competing to blockchain. And we're just going to mention two of them specific. Again, as we did in the last video, we'll put links to this down below in the comment section. So there's two different technologies. One is called Tangle. It's a pretty interesting technology. It's in its infancy, and it would be considered to be a competing technology to blockchain. And one of the interesting things about this is that this type of technology or the Tangle technology uses all these different Internet of Things devices. So all these different devices that are connected to the Internet, Tangle uses those devices to do all these little microtransactions that need to take place when it comes to specifically like cryptocurrency. Again, there's probably potential uses for it outside of that. So that's why it's a, a fairly interesting technology. There's also another technology um, out there called Hashgraph. Now, Tangle and Hashgraph, we think are kind of two of the bigger ones. It doesn't mean there aren't other technologies out there. There definitely are, but these are two that have kind of come up to the surface when it comes to um, competitors to blockchain. And with Hashgraph, the summary of that is there's really no single point of failure like there potentially could be uh, with blockchain. So pretty interesting on the technology front um, and a lot of things that are happening. We, I can guarantee, will do other video blogs later this year as technology develops and as, as things happen in this industry, we wanna keep you guys updated on all the different exciting things that are happening with technology and with blockchain. Thank you for joining us for part two of our discussion of blockchain in the maritime industry. If you like this video or any of the other content on this channel, make sure you hit the like button. Also, we invite you to subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we put out new content, which comes out every single week here on the video blog. Connect to us and join the conversation in our social media, detailed in the banner above and also in the comments section below. If you have questions about maritime security, maritime risk management, regulatory compliance, or how we are using technology in the maritime industry, don't hesitate to reach out to us anytime. Because here at IMSA, we're always happy to steer you in the right direction.